government to plan for the future when you don't know what the funding levels are going to be. And uh, we held hearings. We got ready to uh, write a new uh, transportation bill. You've all heard references to Map 21. That is the primary uh, transportation bill, which was expiring uh, last summer, and funding uh, was uh, in short supply. We're going to have to uh, stop all the road projects across the country. And so it was funded on a temporary basis through a thing called pension smoothing. Um, which sounds nice, but I'm pretty sure you don't want that to happen to your pension. Um, money was borrowed from pension funds to uh, do a temporary eight-month um, extension. So, you know, that is coming up here. Let's we'll try to find that balance uh, between, you know, protecting what is so precious to us, the forest, the lakes, the natural environment, and still allowing progress uh, to move forward. So you, you find yourself in the middle of a lot of conflict. I'm a supporter, of course, of Sandpiper and uh, Keystone. Why? Well, you was just pointed out here, um, uh, 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 attack and I to the port of Duluth on the rails that were being used for so many years uh, because the railroads are full of that oil damage. The farmers can't get their grain. Why? Because the roads are full of that oil damage. They had to shut down four power plants here in, in northeastern Minnesota. Why? Because they couldn't get the coal in for the power plants. Why? Because the railroads are full of oil tankers. So, well, first of all, I'd like to thank you, uh, Congressman Nolan, for uh, having the forum. It's uh, near and dear to Labor's heart, of course. And uh, it's a good thing that you have Labor and uh, the Chamber, because without Labor, there's no business, and without business, there's no land cities. Tourists come to escape. Um, they come to escape uh, work and stress and traffic and, and this urbanness of, of the metro. And if, if they're coming north only to find the same situation and, and transportation as they left, that's a problem for us. Um, so I appreciate that, but that's one of the, the points I wanted to make. And 25% of those 900 some members uh, represent the tourism and hospitality community. So I, I get it. It's, it's interesting because transportation has been a premier issue this year at both the state and, and federal level. We knew that. Ask a typical member is transportation a priority? Is it, is it important uh, to you? They, they'd say undoubtedly yes. Um, the second question that I would ask is our uh, system in the lakes area? They, they would say yes. Um, we don't hear a lot of complaints about it. Um, one of the points I wanted to make to you that I hear a lot is, is, the, is the maintenance of those arterial roadways. So 210, 371, County Road 3, um, those are really important that, that people can flow through that uh, easily. Um, Mayor Holman um, had mentioned his parallel corridor uh, plan, the Baxter parallel, parallel corridor, corridor plan. We're very much in favor of that because it gets a lot of traffic off the, the you know, 371 and some of those other things. So it's very encouraging and we offer our support to Baxter as, as, as they try to develop that. Just staying on 371, uh, uh, just for maybe a minute longer, that business 371 route, um, I think that most people, most businesses in the community would say, that that's in need of some improvement. We can do a better job with that. Um, the downtown revitalization, that, that's, that's a big deal to the chamber. Not sure what our role is going to be around that, but we need to pay attention to downtown revitalization. Coming in new, I think that's a gem in the community, the downtown area. And you know, when I, I come in from the south every day, we live uh, in the Fort Ripley area, and I see that sign that says Brainerd Bypass, and it almost invites people to, to bypass Brainerd. And uh, we need to have more of a welcoming route into the downtown area. So I'll just speak on behalf of that downtown community and say that will be a priority as well. Um, just a, a couple other projects. Um, big supporters of the airport. We're big supporters of the airport. We helped advocate and educate around the sales tax that got that infrastructure out there. Um, for those of you that don't know, that's the uh, fourth largest uh, airport uh, in Minnesota by, I believe, by uh, uh, footprint. It's a central service airport. It's very valuable. Uh, lots of commerce going in and out of there. In fact, uh, Jeff Wake, who's been a, become a good friend of mine, I think he's an excellent manager. Um, he told me there are four top customers there. And I thought it was interesting, just jotted these down. 
Uh, census, that's, that's Brainerd Company, National Joint Power, Staples, Graphic Packaging, Crosby, and Landis and Gear, uh, Pequot Lakes. So when you talk about the Brainerd Lakes were regional airport, it truly is regional, yeah, as defined by those uh, four companies. And as those salespeople... A chronic shortage of truck drivers, and it is projected to grow far into the future. According to published reports, the average age of a trucker today is 52. Okay? It's an aging demographic, 